In this series of videos, we're going to review a topic in organic chemistry. We're going to review how to determine whether a stereocenter should be named R or S. So we're going, to we're going to learn how to use the R and S system for naming stereocenters. Uh, hopefully you've already been exposed to the idea in your course that a stereocenter is an atom that's attached to four different groups. Uh, when you're attached to four different groups, there's actually two different configurations in space that we can have around that atom, uh, and we call one of those configurations R and one of those configurations S. Um, just to give you a brief overview, um, let's start with the official method for determining R or S. Well, what's kind of the official method for determining whether a stereocenter is R or S? Well, first of all, you're supposed to assign priorities to the four groups around the atom. You assign priorities to the four groups around the atom. Then you're supposed to rotate the molecule so that the lowest priority is pointing away from you. Rotate the molecule so the lowest priority is pointing away from you. Um, and then you look at the remaining uh, top three priorities to determine whether they're arranged clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, in this series of videos, I'm not going to cover how to use that official method. The official method works just fine, but it has one big disadvantage, which is remember that in order to use it, you have to rotate the molecule so that the number four priority is pointing away from you. Well, that would involve mentally visualizing what the molecule looks like in space so that you can then mentally rotate it. Now, of course, if your mental visualization and rotating, rotation skills are very good, then you would have no problem using that official method. Uh, but my experience is that a lot of students have a very hard time visualizing and rotating molecules, and that even if they can do it pretty well, they oftentimes tend to make careless mistakes when they're doing that, so that it doesn't really give them a reliable and quick way to determine R and S. Well, the good news is that there is also a completely mechanical method that we can use to determine R and S. And that's the method we're going to cover in these videos. We're going to learn how you can quickly and efficiently determine whether either, any stereocenter is R or S. And the method we're going to go over does not involve any, any mental visualization or rotation of the molecule. Now, there are certainly some other topics and subjects in organic chemistry where you really need to be able to visualize and rotate molecules. So that's certainly a good skill for you to keep working on. I hope you keep working on visualizing and thinking about how you can rotate molecules. Um, but you don't need that skill for R and S naming. Uh, and even if you know how to do that, it's probably not the best way to do R and S naming simply because it makes you more likely to make mistakes. Instead, it's really better for almost everybody simply to use a mechanical approach to determining whether the molecule is R or S because it's quicker and it's less prone to careless mistakes. So let's get into that mechanical method. When you're working with R and S, it's very common to work with Fisher projections. So at the start, why don't we just quickly review how to interpret a Fisher projection. I hope that you've already seen in your course that you know you're working with a Fisher projection when the molecule is just represented as a horizontal and a vertical line. And you should know that the horizontal and vertical lines have special meanings. Remember that the horizontal lines should be interpreted as wedges. The horizontal lines should be interpreted as bonds that are pointing out of the page. And the vertical lines should be interpreted as dashes, as bonds that are pointing into the page. You should know that a wedge indicates a bond that's pointing towards you, and a dash indicates a bond that's pointing away from you. So anytime you see a Fisher projection that looks like this, you can interpret it as if it looked like this. Again, the key point is that the, horizontal, that the atoms on the horizontal line are pointing towards you, and the atoms on the vertical line are pointing away from you. So make sure uh, that you have that firmly in mind. Uh, how can you remember that the horizontal line should look like uh, the horizontal line basically represents wedges and not the vertical line? Well, as a kind of mnemonic, you might think that this almost looks like a little person wearing a bow tie. You might think that the wedges are like the bow tie. Uh, well, obviously, a person would wear their bow tie hopefully horizontally and not vertically. Uh, so if you think of the Fisher diagram as like a person wearing a bow tie, that will help you to remember that the wedges, which represent the bow tie, uh, should be on the horizontal line. So the horizontal line indicates the bonds that are pointing towards you. The 
first thing we have to learn is how to assign the priorities to the groups that are attached to the stereo center. Well, the system for assigning priorities is that a higher atomic number indicates a higher priority. The higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. So let's use that system here. Um, and here we have iodine, chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. If you don't know uh, the relative atomic numbers of these, you're going to have to use a periodic table. So in fact, to go through the rest of these videos, I hope that you will find or print out a periodic table. You're going to have to keep referring to that periodic table because an important part of finding RNS is deciding um, what the priorities of the atoms are based on atomic numbers. All right, if you've got that uh, periodic table with you now, you'll see that iodine has the highest atomic number, so it should get the top priority. So we call it number one to indicate that this is the top best priority. Um, then the next atomic number would be bromine, then chlorine, and the lowest atomic number is fluorine. So that gets the number four. So that's how we would assign the priorities in this case. Notice that top priority by convention gets the number one, and lowest priority by convention gets the number four. It's maybe a little counterintuitive, because that means that the lowest priority gets the highest number. But in any case, number four indicates the worst, lowest priority, lowest atomic number, and the number one indicates the highest priority, which is the highest atomic number. assign priorities to these groups. When you're assigning priorities, you should start by comparing only the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. We should only be comparing the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. So I'll put some dots in to show which atoms we're focusing on. This fluorine, this oxygen, this carbon, and this nitrogen. Those are the four atoms we're examining. We're not looking at these hydrogens or this iodine yet, um, because those atoms are not directly connected to the stereo center at the middle of the Fischer diagram. Uh, so um, based on this, we should get the highest priority. Uh, we should know that fluorine has the highest atomic number. And then we would have oxygen, nitrogen, and this carbon. So the carbon gets the lowest priority. Now, you can see how crucial it is that we were only comparing the atoms that were directly connected to the stereo center. What would have happened if we let our eyes stray and we started looking at some of the atoms that were further away? Well, then it might start to seem like this should be the highest priority because it's attached to the iodine over here. Uh, if you focus on the iodine, it would seem like this should be the top priority. But remember, there was never any reason to look at the iodine. Instead, we were looking at the carbon because this is the atom that's directly connected to the stereo center. So again, you need to start um, by just comparing the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center and don't let your decision be swayed by atoms that are further away from the stereo center. This is the bottom priority, even though if we go one step more out, we're attached to an iodine with a high atomic number.